This is my second book in the series on the mystical vision of the Inklings. The first one was called um, 11 Hidden Gems in the Works of the Inklings. And uh, this is a collection of 44 chapters, uh, which are basically insights into their books. So I'm going to read chapter 1. This is an illustrated edition. Uh, I found these Art Nouveau illustrations and I just couldn't take my eyes off of them. Chapter 1. You are Psyche. Butterfly as a divine symbol of the soul. When I first read about the imaginal cells in a caterpillar, I thought, if it isn't the best metaphor for life, I don't know what is. The biology of a caterpillar is truly stunning. A crawling, land-bound creature has been leading an ordinary life. But one day, something shifts within its small body, and it receives the message that it's time to change. It becomes dormant for a long time, enclosing itself in a blanket. And something mysterious starts happening inside that cocoon. If you look closely, it is sheer poetry. Once the caterpillar is fully inside the cocoon, the cells of its body abandon their form. The caterpillar shifts into a whole new phase. It's no longer a caterpillar, but not yet a butterfly. Believe it or not, there are so-called imaginal cells in a caterpillar. Think of the word imagine. Up to this point, they have been inactive, but suddenly they begin to operate as a single-celled organisms inside the cocoon. Surprisingly, the caterpillar's old immune system detects those little dreamers and perceives them as a threat to the old way of life. So it launches a full-scale attack on them. To win this battle, the imaginal cells have to band together and present a united front for transformation. They start connecting, interacting, multiplying, and collaborating until they gain enough power to create a butterfly. What is born out of that cocoon is a creature that Greeks associated with a soul. They used one word for butterfly and soul, psyche. But why? If you observe a butterfly fluttering from, from flower to flower, you will see that it literally sucks the nectar out of life. To have a soul means to flutter from flower to flower and taste the nectar of life. However, before it happens, there is a process of inner transformation that we must undergo to grow wings, a process of shedding the old, sel the old self that sees all change as a threat to the old way of life. This is the function of imagination. We must dare to dream about flowers and nectar. The stronger the dream, the more power we have for transformation. The old self is shed through the power of imagination. In C.S. Lewis's Till We Have Faces, Orwell and Psyche are two sisters. Orwell believes she's ugly, while Psyche is as beautiful as a goddess. Orwell covers her face with a veil, ashamed of how she looks. Psyche's face is uncovered, and people worship her as if she were Aphrodite herself. When Psyche is sacrificed to the god of the Grey Mountain, who is believed to be a monster, Orwell goes to rescue her, or at least bury her bones. But she finds Psyche alive and well. She says she's not a victim, but a bride of God of the Grey Mountain. And they live happily in their castle, except that he forbids her to see his face. Orwell coerces her to look at his face anyway. And when Psyche does it, she is banished from his presence 
and must endure many sufferings. Psyche goes through them all and becomes a goddess. At the end of the story, the god of the gray mountain, who turns out to be Cupid himself, the god of love, tells Orwell an eye-opening truth. You are Psyche. The message shakes Orwell to the core of her being. Suddenly, it dawns on her uh, what was happening, and she says, how can the gods meet us face to face till we have faces? She was Psyche all along, but she believed herself ugly and veiled her face in shame. She could have been the bride of God if she had dropped that shame and opened her face. We are all Psyche. We are the soul. And we have a heavenly bridegroom. But until we have dropped our old self, shame, we don't have a face and cannot meet God face, face to face. However, if we have enough imagination, we can break through that cocoon. There will be strife. The old self does not want to let go of the old way of life. But if we remember who we are, gods and goddesses, our imagination will help us drop the cocoon of our shame and become a winged creature who can enjoy the nectar of life. The Greek depicted Psyche as a beautiful woman with butterfly wings.